Hey everybody. So um, I double double loaded up a couple of, uh, of these Q&A sessions and I did that and I want to find out who's been watching and said, uh, hey, you did that already. No, actually the real reason is, is I'm a blithering idiot. So, so if you see one- That's where, an understatement, yes, understatement. Yeah, so if you see one where the beginning you've seen before, number, cuckoo, one, yeah. cuckoo, cuckoo. <laughs> number one, let me know and then I'll take it down. Sorry about that. So here we go, sorry. They've got the, doing a frank job. Okay, so here we go. Nicole Price says, I'm getting my color genetics tested soon. Uh, here's a line I can tan carries fluffy. I'm not sure why you're getting the color genetics tested soon if you already know the answer, but um, er, here's a line I can tan carries fluffy and maybe carries cream in Isabella. So I guess when you say Isabella is that you think that maybe he also carries testable chocolate. Would a visible chocolate and cream carrying Isabella be a good... You've got some kind of wording here that's a bit mixed up. So, so um, uh, what would they produce? Well, let's just assume that your dog, that the one dog is a, is a Isabella tan bred to an Isabella carrier. The answer is that you'd expect to get Isabellas out of it, blues and chocolates with tan points as well. So I think that's all I'm going to go on that one. Lauren Irby says, never knew about the fluffy Frenchies. They are awesome. They are awesome. I love these little dogs. They're such cuddly little things. And they don't shed. At least the ones we have don't shed. We've got one. And their hair is soft as silk. Yeah, Johnny Cash. He looks like a little polar bear, a little black I, polar no, bear. No, he reminds me of a chow. <laughs> he does, doesn't he? He's, he's just, got, he's I mean, his small. hair's, his hair's yeah. four or five inches long. Yeah. He's, he's got a triple, quadruple color. Yes. Is what I think. Uh, Nick Hill Patil says, uh, hello, so big fan. Progesterone level test 1.1, doing cross mating with a street dog. Not sure what that means. What's a street dog, just a mutt? Yeah, I guess so, Heinz 57. Conceived chances, well, no different than, well, first off, you're not gonna breed on a 1.1. So you're way early on a 1.1. You're probably five, six days early on a 1.1. Most dogs are at 1.1 about day five or six. Most dogs are bred between day 11 and 13. So you're, you're way early on this, but just because it's a street dog, it doesn't matter what dog it is. It could be a Heinz 57 with one leg and a, and a long tail. You're gonna get puppies out of it if you get the timing right. It's not like you have to breed a Frenchie to a Frenchie. You could breed a Frenchie to you know, a Doberman Pinscher. You're gonna get mutts, but they'll, 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 they'll breed. Uh, it's just like Tammy and I breeding an Englishman to a Texan. It works. Uh, Jeff Morgan, how do you increase your litter size and what determines your litter size, the male or the female? I've done videos on this, I'll touch on it quickly here. So litter size is determined by the female. It's all about the number of eggs that she produces. Getting all those eggs to end up into puppies uh, is, is, a, is a number of things, but the dog, obviously the female has to be healthy enough that she can have a successful litter. She needs to be bred at the right time yeah, that's a, what I was fixing to say, timing. Timing's the big thing, that's right. Yes. Timing's the big thing. Um, Tammy's not on video, by the way, because she doesn't have a, a makeup on. She still looks great, but she won't let me video her, so there we go. So timing, like Tammy I said. I don't want to lose customers. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah, all right. Um, if we were running a brothel, it might make a difference, but we're not, we're just doing dogs here. So anyway, um, mm. um, yeah, so you, it's all about timing. The female determines the number of eggs that are dropped. The, 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 the purpose of the stud is to provide quality semen in good shape. And then you, as the breeder, have got to get it timed right. Do those things, you get the biggest litter you can. Which in a Frenchie could be as many as 13 puppies. Get it wrong, you get zero puppies and anything in between. And by the way, that is uh, 13 puppies is not really what you want, nor is it typical. Oh, French is three to five. Three to five well, is a typical litter. Typical, yeah. Yeah, we averaged actually, on our last year's breedings, we averaged 4.7 puppies was the average breeding that we had. Of course, there were some in there that were huge litters, and there's some in there that were no shows too, but that was the average size. So, so French Cutex vlogs had sent a number of things here about the intensity gene. Um, and uh, 
And I think that she or he or she is onto the right thing here. So I'm just going to read what she says, and I think this is probably correct. She says, so I've, uh, and is a she, so I've heard from several sources that a dog that has cherry tan points or red fawn don't have any copies of intensity. Well, she goes on to say that, in her opinion, she believes that the, it takes two copies of intensity for it to be effective. We talk about the intensity gene, I'm sorry here. So this is something that I don't know much about, and Animal Genetics, who I use, doesn't have a test for gen a a intensity. I'm very interested in this because we have a Euro Hero dog that's about to be bred and I feel that that is probably a dog with two copies of intensity. So in double intensity gene works on creams and creams come in colours from all the way from red all the way to almost white. And the intensity gene plays a part in how that uh, tan points show up on those dogs and how the cream looks, how, cr how white the cream is. So they, she says here, red fawn dogs don't have any copies of intensity. By the way, Brindle's got to be out of this, otherwise none of this counts. Um, Brindle's dogs don't have a copy of intensity. When dogs express lighter tan points, which isn't red, it may have one copy of intensity. And dogs that are very light, almost cream color, and uh, uh, also very likely have two copies of intensity. So I think you're probably right about this. There are other things in here that play a factor as well. So I can tell you this, in a blue and tan dog, this ATAT, that has cream, you see really bright, bright tan points. I don't know those dogs, what they have for intensity, because I, I haven't been able to test for them. But, but certainly, I'm gonna find out more about this, but I think you're generally, the, what you're saying here, I, I think is probably correct. Well, Cody's dog, uh, the new shade Isabella that he has, uh, Shiner, Yes. He has double intensity. And he's got and he, really... His coat is bright. Yes. Just, his eyes are just wild. Right. And then so. look at things like Kiki, who's a dog that's going to be bred soon. Kiki's got really bright tan. Oh, yeah. She's a lilac and tan. Yeah. Really bright pencil. But I suspect she has a copy of cream and maybe double intensity. So we're a bit sketchy on this, but I just want to bring this up because I think that what what's being said here by uh, um, um, So Frenchy Qdex is probably on the right track. C. Johns, good morning, love your channel. I inseminated my dog a progesterone level of 10 and again a progesterone level of 14. That was eight days ago. Is it normal for her to still be breeding dark red at this point? So really, the answer is probably okay, but if you really want to know what's going on, you need to do another progesterone test because your number of 14 was a little bit low and she could have gone back down and that might explain what's going on here. I suspect that she'd probably find a progesterone level is nice and high in the 30s or 40s and you're fine. But if you want to double check on this, that's what you've got to do. Will a fluffy Frenchie always have fluffy puppies? Only yeah, if it is... Yesterday. Yes, Day I think yesterday. so. Only if it is bred to... Yeah, I think we're repeating ourselves here, so this is going to be yeah. the last one on this. Yeah. So, only... It, well, tell me, tell, tell me, tell me, you can answer that for us. A full fluffy to a full fluffy, you get off full fluffies. A fluffy carrier to a full fluffy, you get half and half. Half carriers, half full fluffies. If you breed a normal or regular coat. French Bulldog, regular coated coat. dog, with a full fluffy, every one of those babies will be uh, fluffy carriers. And? Then you can finish up the rest if of the If you bred a, 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 a non-fluffy dog to a fluffy carrier, that's the other one you missed, what yeah. you get? Half fluffy, half fluffy carriers and half not. So this is why I need to stop doing these videos and Tammy needs to do them all because she knows it all anyway. No. She's right. So there we go. All right. The, the video. Uh, I really appreciate people who subscribe to me. It helps me, encourage me to do more of these videos. But do remember, disclaimer here, I am not a vet. I'm not a licensed medical professional. I'm purely a person who's been breeding dogs for the last couple of decades. Any information that you got from this video, use at your own risk. There's nothing implied here, and certainly this is, should not be used as a substitute for advice from your veterinarian or your medical professional. I hope you enjoyed the video. Come back for more of them. Bye.